Um, Cause I had a hard time expressing it. And one is like, you know, there could be some, sometimes anger. Like I come with this intensity sometimes too, just to release that. Sometimes we can make ourselves wrong for anger. There's actually nothing wrong with anger. It's just how it's actually being expressed. Letting that go, there's such an incredible release that happens to release this, to receive. Welcome to your new episode of Wish I Knew That Before. I'm your host, Amit Pandey, and here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas, answer questions that can directly help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better. Our guest for today's show is a mindset coach and the founder of FlowFam. He truly believes that the quality of your life comes from the quality of your communication not just with others, but also with yourself. FlowFam provides participants a glimpse into themselves through employing the power of their voice, music, and a non-judgmental space. It is a space where you can take your mask off, be yourself, and express yourself wholeheartedly to experience the flow state. Today, through his programs, he helps many individuals take that mask off and use their voices to authentically express themselves. But there was a time where he had his own mask on, where he had problems using his own voice, so much so that even his mom thought that he had speech impediment. He was often mocked for his big ears, blue braces, being a shy Asian kid. He truly knows what it means to be unexpressed for years. What started as a place for him and his buddies to get that cathartic release through flow, today is changing lives across the world. A true believer in gratitude, itadakimasu, a Japanese word which means thank you for everything that it took to make this happen. Please join me in welcoming a guy who went from a shy kid to a wordsmith, from being underconfident to being confidently lost, from being unexpressed to holding a container for others to authentically express. The flow master, who can preach like a pastor but chooses to freestyle faster, Gavin Masumia. Yeah! <laughs> yo, yo, my brother, my brother. One of my favorite interviewers is Tom Bill Yu for Impact Theory, right? Formerly Inside Quest. I think he gives the greatest introductions. And y'all didn't really see, but my hands were going up when when <laughs> the more that you're building me up, I'm like, that is the dopest introduction that I've ever been given before. I love that. Thank you. So where, where do you think the inspiration comes from? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's go, everybody. Tom, Tom will you is what this um, introduction set is what I, I draw a lot of inspiration from. Gav, I, I spoke about a lot of things in the introduction. I, and I want to discuss those things. I want to talk about flow fam. I want to talk about voice music, non-judgmental space, your childhood. I want to talk about living your legacy. But the first and foremost question while I was researching you and I was looking at your videos from 2018 is that how did that spiky hair transform to this flowy hair that you have today? (laughs) Oh my goodness, my goodness. Well, if you want to, on the topic of hair, like I've I've had so many different types of (laughs) I had so many different types of hairstyles yeah. growing up. Yeah. I've had the, 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 the Asian parted down hair. Yeah. I had the highlighted tips in middle school. That was from my sister's ex, Kyle. <laughs> What's up, Kyle? And then I, I was bald for a little bit. I was a monk yeah. when I lived in Japan because mm-hmm. I didn't want to pay for my haircut. So right. I just, so yeah so a lot of lot of hair stories <laughs> i was like that's a great transformation for all those spiky hair to the free flowing hair because i it's not just about the hair i think in these three or four years the journey that you have also taken mm-hmm. right that hairstyle not just the hairstyle got, got transformed it's you who got transformed and in that process you have transformed so many other people's life as well let's talk about flow fan how has the definition of flow fam evolved for you over these many years that you have been doing it? I love that question. Well, first off, thank you. Andrew. Thank you for asking that already. Is flow fam, you know, for everybody that's really tuning in, like it is kind of was an was an accident. Some people could say that it was everything's not an accident. There's a reason for everything, right? 
this was never intended to be a, a public thing that was going to be introduced and shared with others. It started in my apartment with two, two young dudes, Michael and Gavin, who we met at a speech competition for Toastmasters that later formed into this 5 a.m. club where we would meet up, read a book together, we'd read a chapter of Think and Grow Rich together, and then we would talk about what we got from it. And it was through that that we all learned that we both liked to freestyle, but secretly, because we were just too self-conscious about it. And we just started freestyling at the tail end of our morning accountabilities before I went to my social services job back then and he went to Hulu. And it was amazing because he was a, also an aspiring speaker as well as a coach. So the way that we spoke about things, we got really deep into our insecurities, we really woke, spoke about the things that we aspired for. And it was different from what I've heard of or how I used to actually flow. And that really transformed the way that I thought about freestyling, that this could really be a great way to, to really grow into experimenting with your voice, to, to explore what it feels like to really truly be honest that I didn't learn in Toastmasters. And that's it really where it started and ended up moving to my buddy, Archie, who's been rapping for four years, came into the circle and my cousin came through and then we would talk about health. So inspired my buddy to go on a fast. He started losing weight. And, and that's when we were like, inspired my cousin to start making a podcast. And then that's when I noticed this is, this is a disguise. It's, this is really not about freestyle. You know, this is about people really experiencing their greatest selves. And that's flow state, the optimal state of consciousness where we feel our best and we do our best. And for any of you who are tuning in, you probably know that feeling when you're when you're so into something that everything withers away. You're not trying to posture to try to act like you're cool, that 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 you need to impress your friends. It's it's just you're so enraptured in the moment, you're enveloped in the moment that this is where the highest performance comes from. When it's not about impressing, and the higher the skill, the easier it gets in the flow. So it doesn't take away skill. But that's where it started. It started in here. And eventually we just said, let's try to do it publicly at a beach. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that it has, it has reached to the masses, what elements have you added to it that you felt? One thing that definitely comes is how you saw the potential of it, right? Mm -hmm. In these many years, you initially it was between just two people. But now you're holding a container. You're holding a space for so many people to come in and authentically express themselves. Has the definition changed for you when it comes to flow fam or like, I wouldn't say changed, but I would say evolved. Are you defining it in a new way right now? Yeah, definitely. I do define it in two different ways. There's, there's one way that is that where I initially came into, and that's the artist the artist inside of me, the one that just likes to flow, the one that likes to just get into and, and, and express in that way. So that's really one side. And they don't necessarily, they can't replace each other. So there's that side. And then there's the other side that I'd love so dearly and that, you know, you know, intimately too, Amit. And that's the, that's the art and the science of facilitation. I just, I love it. I love the space of how do you create a space for strangers that don't people that don't know that each other that I don't even know what they went through that week I don't I may not know what they've been through in their life because I just met them and how can I create a space where even though I don't know that I can come from that human level where everything just levels out and they realize we're all human we all have insecurities we all have challenges we all have joys no matter what even if we're keen enough to look for it and from this place I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to express myself in my heart and what I truly care about, the things that I'm scared about, the things that I dare about, the things that I'm aware about. I'm going to express those things. And there's so much healing that I've just, I've experienced inside of that space for myself, overcoming grief and the healing that I've experienced other people that maybe lost their father that are going through hard times. And it has a way of uplifting the human spirit. And so they are different. It's the facilitation and then the artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I love that. I love that. One of the things that I have personally observed that I mentioned in the introduction as well is, and feel free to add to this, to my observation, that there are three pillars when it comes to flow fam. One is the voice. Another one is music. And the third and one of the most critical aspect is the space, the non-judgmental space that we need to create. Because we can have voice, we can have music. If the space is not good, we might not flow. That is really great. I love how you you dissected in those three areas. Those are definitely three really important areas. And I can jump off of, flow off of any of those. And I would say that because what we're talking about, everyone here is flow state, right, is defined as an optimal state of consciousness where we feel our best and we perform our best. Yet that next level is actually a collective effort. It's a group flow. That means that coming together, there's a new level of peak performance that happens when people come with differences, but they're aligned to a common goal. And you can see this in teams, whether it's in a company, you can see that in a sports team, you can see that with friendships. And so in order for that to happen though, there should be a structure, some sense of a structure inside of a group space. So it's not just about, people think of flow is just about going with the flow, going with whatever's there. That's actually a myth. There's two very important pieces to flow. And that's that there's actually a level, counterintuitively, of discipline. There's a discipline that's established where to access more flow, it's important that our skill level continues to rise. And so we want to continue to pushing ourselves to sharpening our iron, maybe a little more deliberate practice inside of the flow. If you're comfortable, authentically expressing yourself, try adding a little rhythm into it now, right? Get to that next level. And so we have two important principles that always stands in any flow fam space. And feel free to take this into your life as well, because they're equally as applicable. Like the first one, as you know, emit is called flow just around the corner. This is a part of setting the container. And we're talking about flow state, as I mentioned. And we're also referring to something known as a flow cycle. The flow cycle is something that Stephen Kotler had introduced to me. He's one of the cutting edge researchers when it comes to flow in the world, everyone. And basically, there's four stages S, R, F, R, surfer. You won't forget this, everyone. S, R, F, R, ride the wave of flow. The S means struggle. Struggle. What? What? Yes, struggle is a necessary part of flow. And that means that there's a skills challenge ratio, they call it. And so if ever you find yourself bumping up against something, it's hard. There's nothing wrong. Okay, just know that if you're bumping up against something right now, there's nothing wrong. All that means is that you're in the struggle side phase of the flow cycle. And so that means it may just take a little bit of effort in order to, to, to relax, to release, which is the R the R. You have to flow just around the corner. Keep taking that step and you can release by relaxing. And think about that. When you relax, are you judging yourself as much? Most likely not. Because when we get into flow, we're not judging ourselves no more. And so that is a prerequisite. You can breathe deeply to get into the release. And that helps to trigger flow state, that place where four things happen, right? You sense a selflessness starts to occur. It's called stir, right? Selflessness, your ego dissolves and you feel like you're being channeled. You're channeling something. Timelessness, you kind of lose a sense of time. Then it becomes effortless. And the last one, there's a richness in the sensory experience. So, so I think you gave a definition of flow that you are connected with your consciousness, your awareness, Time just flies by. You're in that zone. What really happens when you are in the flow state in your body? Like, what what is it? If we can, like, truly get deep a bit, not too much, but, like, what really happens and where can we, like, like right now we are talking about flow in flow fam where we are getting deep with our emotions and we are using voice voice as a tool the music as a tool to facilitate us reaching that state of awareness reaching that no mind zone right where else can flow where else can flow happen and what happens when we are like for a for a normal average person who is not in flow fam who has not experienced it or maybe experienced it, but doesn't know that, right? 
how will you define it to that person like truly materialize it for that person mm so good question let's see how do i want to approach this so you can approach it like more scientifically right so flow state uh what actually happens when we're in flow is that we are getting out of the analytical mind a lot of the analytical mind you know when you find yourself stuck in your head that's very front of the mind that's very prefrontal cortex so that this part of our brain the front part of our brain is very evaluative it's like it's linear it's trying to make sense of every little thing it's trying to line every single duck in the row before you say okay i'm good enough to do that And so everyone do like can you do have you ever had a time where you you want to do something but then you start to get into this mind of like I don't really know if I should do that what if I mess up right what if I mess up think about that what if I what if I fail isn't that evaluative because now because you know you're asking yourself that what if I fail what if what if she says no to me what if I get rejected that's evaluative that same mechanism right there is the same mechanism that you will plan new year's comes around the corner right and you're going to plan your goals that's healthy that's a good that can be a good way set your goals and you can still inner critic is the same area uh, so flow state when we get into flow a large part of that deactivates mm. it shuts off so it actually is beyond the analytical mind and from this place they call it transient hypofrontality so this is where that part deactivates and then you just are fully immersed in the moment i call this like this is like when we get into this when we're speaking it's a spoken meditation or if y'all play basketball if you are into chess so you can get to a level where you're not as in the analytical place you just kind of like know where to go mm. and so that is the magical place that we're talking about that is so, the magical place mm-hmm. yeah 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 it is the magical place and as you said like there are four stages to it struggle release flow and recovery and all four of them are very important places that you have to be mm-hmm. you cannot go to the release without the struggle struggle is good as you mentioned now that we have established what is flow state and and in through flow fam we are trying people to get there because when you are in the flow state one of the things as you said it happens that you you reach that no mind zone where you're not overthinking you know the the calluses that we have built in our mind the pathways that have already built it might be someone else's perspective it might be that someone else has trained it for it and we have just absorbed it and when you reach that flow state you're forming those new places that you haven't even gone before in flow fam itself you use voice music judgment free zone why these three elements because when i was researching you i it felt to me that your childhood has shaped a lot of what we have in flow fam today so how so i would ask like how has your childhood shaped flow fam's present mm mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Man. As a as I mean like you know as you were saying about me growing up in the introduction is that I was really reserved. I was a really shy kid that started a year late in school. And actually I remember still preschool during our choir before we graduate to go to kindergarten. I would just hide behind the kids and I was crying. and i wanted i didn't want to be seen but i was still crying and causing a scene so i didn't i didn't want to be seen and that was like a big part of me of not valuing my voice and i'll get reinforced for that why don't you have anything to say gavin do you have anything to say and i'll just curl up more and so there's always been this way of me trying to wanting to prove myself but being scared I thought that I was inferior to my older sister and my brother who I just thought were so intellectually smarter than me. And so I had this inferiority complex um and didn't know how to express it. But I always loved music too. Even though I didn't I never took rap lessons, I've always liked hip hop and R&B. And 
I would be in my room and I would just kind of like flow out loud because uh, I just really, en- I really enjoyed it, but I didn't have any confidence. And when I tried to do it in middle school, I remember certain people like this guy, Joey, he would just say that you suck. You know, uh, this guy, Jeremy would say you're terrible. And so I just stopped publicly. Yeah. But I still would do it, you know, in my room. And then the, I think the space, you know, around us collective space is I really learned more about that later on. Like later on when I was uh, in after college, when I started teaching, I started teaching English in Japan that I started to be like, oh, damn, this is hard. But it's so powerful. How do you get a group of these middle school kids that have no respect for the head teacher to respect me, which I failed a lot of the time? <laughs> that's hard I don't that group is not my cup of tea actually to work with however it made me fascinated about wanting to hold that kind of space and so I think that all of those just helped led to that mixture of those three that you were able to really fractionalize and break down um, and that's my North Star it's really wanting to people to f- never feel like they have to be reserved around me or like they have to they can't be themselves and so when people talk to me they're like you know how to hold space I I I I didn't I didn't know how to express myself I never felt safe growing up and nothing that my parents did it's not about that they did a wonderful job especially you know it was just my own insecurities uh, that led to it and so I think the pain can really, your pain in life of just not feeling good enough can really help to enforce a stronger purpose. That's well said. Your pain in life can help you form that strong purpose because you have been through that pain. You know, you know how it feels in your body. You know how it feels in your mind. You know how how many opportunities you have let go of because you were feeling that pain. You don't want that to. It's quite interesting that, right? Like people who who are going through pain, sometimes it they can go two ways. One way is they wish bad on other people. Misery loves company. And the other people who who are there, who are like, I went through that pain. I, do, I don't wish it on anyone. And you know, another part about it, it was both sides. I was both. You know, after a certain part, I started becoming arrogant. And then it's just, oh, I got my first girlfriend. I, I got, I lost my virginity. I like, I must be the man. I know everything. And then I would be this lecture that would tell people what to do. Like, I, like, what the, what do I know? You know, really, what do I know here? That was my, that was me that was trying to, and I, I stopped listening. And I just kept wanting to tell people what to do. And it took me years, like, to, to really just learn to get back into that listening. And so I think all that being said is that, you know, life is a beautifully messy journey. You know, I'm not coming here as a saint. I'm not coming here as a guru. I'm just a man with the, with, with that has been, that, that has been through certain experiences, just like you. And it helps to formulate some beliefs, you know, that, and this is what I share, like, as this is a part of my human experience and flow fam has largely culminated out of a pain point growing up that I didn't fully satiate. So This is self-servingly in a way, like the very space that I wish that I had, which is such a common thing that people say, right? This is the thing that I wish I get it though. I so get it. Cause who, (laughs) who else, uh, who else would I do this for? Like, cause I can relate. And so everyone, this is why the pain, whether it was me and having to face my drug issues back in college, because I didn't want to face the romantic relationship that I was and didn't have the courage to express myself that, and I was drinking and driving and doing all that stuff. Like, that helped to also reinforce me to thank God I'm here to decide that I'm never going to do Xanax again. And when my friend passed away in 2011, I, I vowed that I'd never drink and drive again. I wish that he was still here, but he's not. And that's okay. But that really helped to lead me to your life is bigger than yourself. And every time you're behind the wheel and you're, dr- you're drinking and you would drink, you were putting your life at risk. And you remember the look on Hank's mom when you visited the day of, when you found out that he passed away, you know, and you never want to do that to your family. Your life is so much bigger than you. All of those pain points 
like just there's 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 a there's a beauty in that you know there's a beauty in that yeah yeah there is a beauty in that there is a beauty in what you said that life is messy you are not the guru you have done your fair share of stuff where you're like why did i do that but i think i think as you as you said sometimes we have to go there to realize that we don't want to go there you know in life sometimes we 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 need that flow fam how i view it in my life right i view my life as building my life resume as jesse itzler um contextualized it very well for me the things that i was doing in my life um he just gave it a term that that's your life resume flow fam is part of my life resume it is how i view my life as experiments and experiences i came to my first flow fam it was an experiment there was there was uh, who who was that girl that who talked about butt plugs in um i don't i don't remember her name she but, she would be totally okay if you say what up madison what up madison madison yes and i came to the first flow fam meeting and i was scared like a lot of people would at, at the first time right because i'm front of i'm in front of so many strangers and i didn't go first there were you who went first madison went first theo went first and other people went first and i was just observing and losing my mind that first of all few of you were f- were freestyle rapping i'm like <laughs> how <laughs> and in the flow that you were creating such magical gems the downloads that you were getting i was like it was blowing my mind we entered the scatting session and scatting in in front of everyone i was like how the pizza pizza in how how do you say it the scatting is in in uh, what's yeah, the word? Un- unintelligible sounds unintelligible sounds we are not trained to do that Right. society doesn't want us to do that our mind doesn't want us to do that we want to make sense as you said like that prefrontal cortex that evaluative part it wants to make sense of everything but what if we let go mm. what if we experiment with letting go and being being funny owning your weird as you would say mm-hmm. owning that monkey within you know mm-hmm. just just dancing to the rhythm of it and finding new rhythms the voices that we use the music that that was brought in that space it truly it truly made me feel that this is the experiment that i never want to reach to a conclusion mm. i don't want to conclude i just want to flow with it it will take me to new places i don't even know but i want to go there why voice gavin why voice there is writing there is acting there is dancing what is it about voice that can truly take you that flow take you into that flow zone and truly make you feel connected with deep within because whenever i go to flow fam i always say flow fam equals to freedom whenever i go to flow fam i breathe better mm-hmm. i feel better What is the role of voice in that? Mm. Mm. Well, first off, uh more more personally and selfishly it's like it's just I didn't have a voice. So it is kind of a part of my life story or I didn't feel like I did. That was part of my life story here. But another part is just voice or like these physical vibrations. I just love how Roger Love, he's like one of my mentors from afar. He's just like our voice every is a physical connection. it's a physical connection that we keep, that that we have with ourselves as we're speaking and we use our voice differently it it resonates at a at a different level and so it creates a physical connection with other people as well as it goes into their into their actually their ears and 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 it, and it vibrates inside of them and i'm like oh that's so deep and so i just i love i love voice because there are so many ways that we can use to to express it we have so many different tones we have so many different melodies we have so many different tempos that we can use and it moves us like 
Martin Luther King, when his when he talks about, I have a dream. It's such an outdated way of speaking now, which is more oratory. But back then, that was so powerful. It was so powerful. And so I just think that our voice, we use it. I don't know if you're like me, but I use it every single day. And so why not? Why not just cultivate this and use this as a way to deeply connect with others? Um, yeah, I just, for me, I'm just selfish. I just love, I just love voice and we all use it every day. So why not use it with music and have fun with it and get into that flow? And uh, it does, it does magic in, in making me more courageous outside of the space. It does magic. It mm -hmm. does magic. It, it is cathartic when you, when you truly express from a place where it's not just about other people judging you. It's about how much are you judging yourself? And when you judge yourself less, and when you speak your truth, when you express authentically, <sighs> our soul, our soul feels free. What is it? What is it about being unexpressed, Gavin, that that feels within our body, that feels within our body, you would have come across a lot of flow dissipants, right? There would be few like me who just love to express, who just love to talk. It's easier for me, I would say, because I have practiced it not just in flow fam, not just in Toastmasters, but in my everyday conversations, right? But there are a lot of people who don't get a chance and flow fam for them is an escape, mm -hmm. but still, they get stuck in the struggle phase and they are not able to reach the release phase. Sometimes people come and they don't speak in flow fam. Mm -hmm. What happens when, when in your body, like that unexpressed, what happens there? Why well, are you not able to express? Well, I think about it kind of like this, uh, the metaphor of, of a basketball, mm -hmm. right? And I just look at us, so you have a basketball, and you know, like when you start to pump it in and you pump it and you keep on pumping it and it gets harder and harder and harder and you pump it, you pump it, pump it. And it gets really hard. And then it's like, all right, I guess I want to play basketball now. And you try to dribble it, but it like, it goes above your head. Like it's so bouncy. And then you try to shoot it and it just bounces off the backboard. Because there's so much air into it. It's so much air that it's really hard to control. And so I just think of that kind of like when we're actually holding things in, it doesn't necessarily like go away. If there's unexpressed resentment with somebody or, or something that has been like from my, my path of not of be feeling guilty over a relationship that um, I think I could have actually handled it. I could have handled it differently. I, 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 I treated her to me. I thought I treated her like shit, you know? And underneath that, I just knew that we were incompatible and I was cowardly wanting her to break up with me. I thought it'd make it easier. So really like owning that. And even after I broke up with her, I was like, yeah, guilty about it, you know? And that had nothing to do with her at that point. Like I wasn't good with myself. And if I just start to avoid it and keep on working and doing things, it's not going to go. That's going to show up in the next relationship, you know? And so for me, I'm like that ball, if there's a lot, sometimes we need spaces just to let the air out a little bit. And to a lot of people, and for me, FlowFam has been for one purpose, there's many others, it's been that release valve. It's been that way of, hey, if you're upset with something, well, you're upset with your girlfriend. I mean, you could just say, say how you really feel to her. You could do that. Like, see how that goes see how that's been going or you know like you can create spaces you can create spaces where that's aired out it's not taken it out and it provides different perspectives you know it provides a different perspective after you release and be like wow that actually was coming from love though you know and let out the release valve maybe some things aren't always meant to be expressed right then and there people like but we all need our spaces to release and it's one of the most beautiful things because through that release other people oftentimes relate. And then the vulnerability becomes a source of relatability, not misery loves company, just like I'm not alone here. And in a growth mindset space, where it's just like we're here to develop, that becomes a source of 
of actually empathy slash compassion in a way to, to just to level up, to start seeing how, where, what was my part in that? How could I have handled that differently? And it goes back to personal responsibility, which is the greatest power. And flow does that. Yeah. Flow does that. Mm-hmm. So basically what Gavin is saying that we crib about, we bitch about everything in, uh, yes. under the sun in, in flow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we just complain. Just let it out. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But <laughs> you said it so, so well. It is a release wall. It is when we release, it helps us, others, it helps others to relate with us because... I think you brought it up one time that FlowFam helps you to peel those layers of onion, you know. Mm. And when you're peeling those layers of onion, tears are bound to come out. Tears are bound to come. Mm -hmm. And those tears are where the authentic expression is. Where where at, at the core, what we see when we see someone expressing whether it's freestyle rapping using the voice and music or whether it's just conversing and just saying what's coming up for me. We see, we relate and it's like, you are the same. I I, I thought I was alone, but now I know there are more people like me who at the base, they are the same. They feel the same things. They are going through the same struggle. They are insecure. They are they are struggling with this particular issue that I was struggling one month back. Oh, I feel home. Oh, I feel less lonely. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That's what that's what Flow Farm is. Yes. What's the dream, Gavin? Is the dream to spread this across the world and let because the I the best case scenario would be Flow Farm, I feel, would just exist for fun if in reality, in our everyday life, we were able to have these sort of conversations. You know, where we are free to speak our own truth, where we are not hiding be- behind those curtains, where we are not <sighs> struggling to show our true self. What's the dream for you with this flow fam? Mm. Well, it's still sculpting for me, everybody, right? So I'm a man that's still figuring it out. However, you know, how I see it is there's two different pieces. One is that I'm realizing how powerful this need is to actually have, I'm only one person. So I want to actually have a way where this can be scaled more with other facilitators who can hold this space and if there's a bigger picture of using technology that can actually help to facilitate. However, I don't know if it's going to ever be that way because there's something about the human connection that makes it so visceral. So is having more trainers that are able to hold these kinds of spaces using also bilinguals that can also facilitate and be trained so they can actually transfer it to other countries and other cultures that I will never be able to touch. Right. And so that's it. The, the spiritual bilinguals that want to come through and help to spread that um so that's one and then the other one is that i just love also the facilitation like i don't see myself ever like leaving the facilitation too i always want to have some of it in my life and so um also i want to continue holding these spaces myself you mentioned the structure of flow fam to really contextualize what exactly happens in Flow Farm. We, 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 we have planned a demo that we would, would love to do um, going towards the end. Yeah. But let's actually talk about the structure. What happens in Flow Farm when it comes to structure? What is the whole flotisipant experience? Like what is that flotisipant's journey that happens in Flow Farm? Because that would really hit it in the nail, I would say, when the listener is trying to wrap their head around, okay, now I know that flow is important. Voice is important. Using musicality helps us reach that. Non-judgmental space is important. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly do I do? You're right. Very good. So after breaking down, okay, this is what flow state really is. This is the flow cycle. The two principles flow is just around the corner. I didn't mention rally a cipher. Hmm. So that's basically just a space where we're really tuning in. 
one of the flow triggers is listen, deep listening. Mm. That's helped to trigger fl uh, group flow. And so that's about uh, really encouraging the space, whether it's through emojis, if this is virtual or through the group chat, encouraging the people to get into that flow. And so after all of that, right, there's a few really important pieces. One is, all right, you know, now that we're, this is about, you know, this is about voice, there's going to be some type of musicality and honestly expressing yourself. Right? What would be an intention that you'd like to get? That's 100% your responsibility. Right? How are you going to show up into the space where after you, you sign off of this Zoom, you would pat yourself on the back, be like, I'm actually proud of how I showed up today. That's a self-validation. What would that be? And so for some, it might be courage. I want to express myself more. I just want to be able to express myself more courageously because I hold myself back so much. Great. What could that look like? What could that feel like? You know, uh, how would you listen from that place of courage? It seems abstract, but how would you really listen from a courage or courageous place? What would you be listening for in somebody else that you might sense they're nervous? How would that feel? So we have the intention. And then after that, it's like, okay, now we're going to switch things up and we're going to get out of your analytical mind because I see some people might be in your head right now. And this is when we get into the scat that we mentioned. Yeah. That's all designed to get out of the analytical mind. So I always lead by example in every exercise, but that's all about be okay with, with not knowing. Be okay, confidently lost, I call it. Yeah. And so scatting represents that. And then we mix scatting and we try to make sense of things as humans, right? And where this idea comes from scatting, like uh, where did this, like I've heard, like you mentioned that jazz, jazz musicians. Very good. Joven, Very right? good. Yes. Jazz, it originated in jazz. People, you know, you'd see people play trumpeters so that they would do it. And they're not on a script. They don't have a, a book with mu a musical composition. They're all just improvising. So the scatting is... Um, is using unintelligible noises with your mouth, your voice is the instrument, and it doesn't even have to uh, be on a rhythm. It could be gibberish. But the point is that you are learning to be okay and confident, even if it doesn't make sense. And that's what the scatting does. Mm -hmm. So after that, we start to blend the worlds. We start to add words into it. So you can look around and start adding words to, we try to make sense of things when they don't, you know? And it's okay, but still be okay when things don't. And then after that, we we get into a prompt. We do some type of game um, that allows us to now use our words. And that right there is where people get moved to tears because now they're comfortable, their heart is more open. They've been priming for listening. So now it's a very sacred space for people to really express their truth. Whether we use prompts like, truth is I haven't been meditating for the past couple of days and I find myself more on edge truth is I'm so impressed even with my auntie Hiroya who's who's still living at 104 she's still sharp but she can't walk and you're just using these prompts to get in and it's one of the most beautiful things because it really gets us present to what really matters. It doesn't even matter what the prompt is. Who is this space for? You know, like people like me who would love to talk and love to just go out and express and I'm that ambivert, you know. Someone who's introvert, do you think Flow Fam is the right space for them? And how, how should they or how would you guide them when they are treading their journey in Flow Fam? Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, there definitely has been um, actually quite a few introverts like that are that come at, into the space. And so, I mean, it would be it would be very similar in a way that I would just I would hold a space. It's just because it's a safe container. Right. And the thing about it is that, you know, the mind wants to actually put this comparison comparison card where the ego comes up and it's like, oh, wow, I'm not as expressive as this person. I'm not as expressive as that person. And that comes up, that comes up a lot in life, right? And so what makes this different than other flow circles, you have it where that can be a lot present where 
this isn't about that this person can rhyme or this person can sing or this person's really eloquent because they've been doing Toastmasters. It's all about just coming into what do you care about? What do you believe? Where, where, what do you doubt right now? And expressing those things, those, those deep things right there, you will. You will be able to access the flow from that because that is your experience. And it's a beautiful experience that conveys the paradox of being human, the paradox in that, wow, like our experiences and how we look and how we speak and all that put together is so unique. It's tremendously unique. Nobody will have the fingerprint that you have. And yet sometimes feeling disappointed, sometimes feeling heartbroken, um, um, things going well and you being grateful for even sometimes the smallest things. That's so relatable. It's so relatable. And so that's really the one of the big things is that it's not about comparing yourself to anybody else. We wanted to make sure that you wanted to continue growing. And the best way is just like, where are you at? Where are you at? You know, what do you believe in? What are you holding on to? What makes your heart sing? You know, like those things are, it doesn't matter if you're introvert or extrovert right there. We can all connect in that way. And who cares if somebody's more extroverted? That's okay. You know, that's okay if somebody is that way. And there are personality differences. Yet our voice, you know, your voice, we, we all have that ability to really express ourselves that way. And even if you don't think it's your zone of genius, that's okay. Maybe this ends up not being your, your flavor, yeah. but it just might. It just might. Mm -hmm. Like, like for me, I, I still have hard time wrapping my mind around how good of a wordsmith Gavin is and how he freestyle in the moment and comes up with great rhyme where I'm having a tough time. <laughs> but I, I realized that at very early stages when you brought it up quite a number of times that, hey, you're thinking too much. Just, just speak your truth. It, it doesn't need to be same as someone else. Your rhyme doesn't need to be same as someone else. It just have to be your truth coming from you within. And that made me feel, yeah, my story matters. If I want to complain today, that's what, what that, that's, that's what's coming up for me. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. People there, won't, they are not saying that, hey, why are you complaining? No, because they understand the ebbs and flows that we all have the cracks and crevices that we all have mm. because they are important. They are yes. important because the light that we are hiding within, it needs to come out and it will come out when we address those things. Mm -hmm. We address those faults, then we address those issues. And that made me feel that I matter. My mm -hmm. voice matters. My feeling matters. Society and our, our, our closed ones a lot of times tells us that that's not a valid feeling. Who told you that? Flofam never tells me that. Flofam never tells me that that's not a valid feeling. And that's a validation that I need. Because, <laughs> and that's so beautiful. I'm so glad you brought that up because, and then we can go into a little demonstration for everyone Demo. if you're, if you're yep. wedding. I know we're teasing a little bit, but that just that part that like every, you know, everybody's justified. Everybody's justified for how they feel. And that's another thing too, that, there's three different um, things that I that I aim to kind of like really address, if anything, inside of the flow fam is that because um, I had a hard time expressing it. And one is like, you know, there could be some, sometimes anger. Like I come with this intensity sometimes too, just to release that. Um, and so it's just like sometimes we can make ourselves wrong for anger. And there's actually nothing wrong with anger. It's just how it's actually being expressed. And and so like letting that go there's such an incredible release that happens to release is to receive we say in flow fam and letting out that pss, the release valve in the basketball can be so tremendous another one is compassion compassion in this article by uc berkeley i mentioned this a lot because it's so beautiful they have two different components of compassion which is is putting ourselves inside of the challenge slash suffering of another 
maybe the hardships they're going through. And the second aspect of compassion is a desire to alleviate that, right? And so that's another one of just, if we were really put in this position of this person over here, however they're showing up with the experiences that they had in the exact order that they had with the parents that they had or lack thereof with the relationships that worked and the relationships that didn't, the people that told them that they could do something, people said they didn't, the self-talk that they had, I would be doing the exact same thing as them. Hmm. I'll be doing the exact same thing because I would be them. Yeah. And even from that place, sometimes I feel people just want to be heard. They don't want my coaching. They don't want a solution. <laughs> they just want a place where it's just like, hey, this is me right now. Oh, my good. Are you still accepting me even though I was angry? Like, oh, I can breathe a little better, right? Oh, and that's a big part of the flow family is like, how can we just hold space for that? Right. How can we hold space for whatever's there and listen for really what's underneath all of these things? And this is just something that I believe will it change later? Maybe right now, all these things that people had, whether it's anger, you know, uh, whether whether it's disappointment, jealousy, love. Underneath all of that is that one. It's like this desire to be heard, this desire to be loved. If somebody's angry, what are they really angry about? What are, Maybe they're hurt. Maybe they're hurt. And anger is a quick way to feel significant, according to human needs psychology. It's one of the fastest ways to feel significant. And we all need to feel like we matter in some way. And some people use that by being angry. It's a little more action oriented than more sadness. Right. And so everybody has their own ways but underneath it. There's some type of desire that they want. And it's usually they want to be heard. They want to feel like they're loved, like they matter. I love that. I mm. love that. And with that, before we get into the demo, without even getting into the demo, let's actually do the demo. Because <laughs> you're flowing. <laughs> yes, we actually are. Yeah. So so how is this going to go is we'll be doing a small bit of what we usually do in like 90 minutes at Flow Fam. We will do bits and pieces of it in a compressed 10 minutes sort of time where we'll be going through scatting and a prompt that the flow master here will provide us. We'll have music on and it will be epic. It will be epic. Let's, yes. let's do it, Gavin. All right, absolutely. So we're going to first off go into the first quick exercise with Amit and I. This is scatting. So feel free as you're listening too, if you'd like to like go along with it or if you'd like to actually experiment with it, this is the unintelligible noises, right? And it's all intended to just to get out of the mind that where we find ourselves stuck in our head and, and analysis paralysis. It's just, let's let that all see if we let lay that, lay that down. Like it's a hat. Okay. And I'm here. I'm going to be playful. I want to have fun. Let's go. And I want to put it Fuck on yeah. and then yeah. I'm going to pass it on to Amit after. Okay. So you might see me get a little crazy, but I'm going to give myself permission <laughs> to do that. It's just a way like I want to stretch too. All right. So here we go. Remember, scatting, just learning just to let go and be confidently lost, okay? Uh-huh. Ah. What did you go for? Not a tip, sir. More for the pets and put your wood. Oh, 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 Ay, 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 
on, okay? This is all about creating ourselves, not just being the same. What is authenticity? Does it mean doing the same thing over and over again? Really? No, sometimes things are uncomfortable and we try it until we get better at a sport or craft until it becomes natural to us. So what? Yeah, don't give me that. Like, let's create ourselves. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll add a little bit of words, okay? Let's actually see. I'm actually gonna change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, I guess like, you know, let's let's bring this a little bit. All right. All right, all right. So you can look around and try to find things. What a go, but if I see the lap I get up a Yo, I got my iPhone actually right in front of me, but uh, I have it off because I don't want it to disturb me when we're on this podcast. I have a candle top right here. I don't know where my candle's at, but I love candles because I don't want to get too much blue light at night, even though I have this ring light right here. All right. I love Laura bars, so it only has a few ingredients and it's so nice. It doesn't completely fill me up, but it really just it's like my comfort food i'm gonna pass it on a bit over to you ah pass it on pass it on pass it on macbook macbook the new m1 macbook <laughs> I love this shit. <laughs> this is real hit. It handles so many things. My laptop is connected to two cameras, one microphone, two big LCD TVs here, and it is still handling that. So it makes me wonder that if I build my inner technology well, how many things can I handle? Yeah, yo, yo, you mentioned about blue lighting. My face is flooded with lights. I don't know how the melatonin <laughs> will get released tonight. I don't know. Maybe I will try to like do some something else. Maybe meditation. Maybe I'll go to that nation of meditation. Yeah, that's where I want to go. I want to build that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I get a good sleep. But yeah so so good so good everybody if you were a part of that too you can give yourself a little pat on the back you know because that's a little strange you know it could be a little weird and actually weird the root of that is w-y-r-d everybody you know and so weird actually means from that root fate personal destiny and so in this place this is where you you have the permission to share your weird Anybody that doesn't like it, they're not haters. They're just not your flavor of weird. The more you share your weird though, the more that you create space for others to be like, that yeah, I like that person. That that means that they're, that you're, they're kind of weird. And you might be able to win some people over initially when they learn to get over themselves, maybe, not always, but share your weird y'all. So, <laughs> so inside of that, I just want to ask you, bro, on a scale from one to ten, how much did you really just let yourself go? You know, and have fun. I Honestly. actually, I, I, I would say I challenged myself today. Maybe it's the element of recording as well. Mm-hmm. Then I noticed that I'm like, let me go all out. Let me just say it. Let me yeah. just experiment. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I don't. But, but I think our conversation has led me here where I am like, let me just push it more. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see what the magic. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. And so like even inside of this, you saw like we still did scatting. We're OK with things not making sense. We looked around. I was talking about my phone because it was right here. But we also we can go by association or Amit heard something that I actually said. And then he just continued actually going with it with with respect to the blue light. Right. So that's just by association. And then you roll with that, too. And it's really a beautiful thing. So there's so many different ways. Some people are just be like, what about a bow? I'm stuck in my head. I don't really know what I'm going to say, but that's really OK. Why do I take myself so seriously all the time? It leaves me so stuck in my head and they start going inner dialogue in there. And that can be incredibly freeing. And so even if you try this by yourself, anybody, 
feel free to go with that internal dialogue inside and you can catch glow just expressing your insecurities and what's going on and that's beautiful and who does do you know anybody that doesn't have insecurities i have yet to find one and so with that being said everybody this is where we take it a little deeper and we're just going to do one little prompt one little prompt and these are just going to be um really simple prompts they're incomplete sentences that you can fill in and it's always good to have incomplete sentences i love them because you can really use certain ones in so many different ways you can always start one way but it can always change and what i mean is kind of like you know amid i'm really grateful for you for oh, whenever you come into the space and whenever i i hear you even over even over the phone or your audio message i can i see your smile even when you send me an auto message it's, it's if you all have never seen him he has one of the biggest smiles i'm really grateful for you for you see that everybody you could use that anywhere really and it can always change you can use it on the same person but the week after it could be a different answer and so it's always nice to have these back pocket incomplete sentences if you want to acknowledge somebody or you know based on what you said this is what i heard right and then you go but you can always start that way if you want to promote understanding so the one that we're going to do today everybody ladies and gentlemen is we i think we've done this last time but let's go as it all it's going to be is sometimes sometimes and i'll go first right here i'll change this up everyone and this is sometimes so we can always return to this and you'll see right here okay You notice the music changed a little bit, so don't worry about the rhythm. You might close your eyes a little bit at first. And that's that's one way that a lot of people get into their flow. They just shut it off and go inside. Sometimes I wake up after not getting a lot of sleep. And I question myself like what's the most important thing to do today and this this voice inside says you don't know what the fuck to do you're a little piece of shit Sometimes that voice is really loud it's loud and it's almost debilitating like sometimes I wanted to, I wanted to post something earlier this week and I didn't and it was just like oh you you're a hypocrite because you you talk about flexing your courage capacity you didn't do it and this mo- this voice inside just sometimes i beat myself up for it more than i say a, i say aloud it's here and sometimes i'm so in purpose i'm so i'm so in the flow that I I'm in this place where it's like anybody can be disarmed in my presence. And I feel people so much that I could I just want to like speak speak to their highest selves with a soft voice or just speak through looking at them in silence. And sometimes I drink so much water in the morning that I just I have to piss literally every minute or I drink so much water before I sleep so I get actually shittier sleep because I have to wake up 3 times to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like maybe I should go to sleep a little dehydrated. That's okay. <laughs> and sometimes I just look and think, "Man, you're lucky, Gavin. You're lucky. You're really lucky." Thank you, mom and dad. sometimes as you said even i feel that i'm blessed a lot of things in my life hindsight things could have gone really really wrong wrong but i feel there's someone watching over me i always have this feeling the life that i'm living today 
there are struggles here and there but a lot of things in my life i feel i have i'm i'm going to that place where i am finding myself sometimes i want to go faster but sometimes i just want to slow down sometimes i compare myself a lot with other guys sometimes i just want not to compare myself so much with other guys sometimes i just want hot girls approaching me <laughs> sometimes i want to play we are not really strangers with so many strangers because i feel there is so much that i can learn that i can love about other people once i start to know their story a bit better sometimes i wish to go really fast with my like be at tim ferris's uh, pace or jo- jordan what's his name i don't know what the fuck some world class podcasters level or space to really produce podcast but sometimes i feel hey there is there is a beginner's dilemma that's going on for you your skill level is not too high right now you haven't really systematized a lot of things your dreams are high but your skills are low let's work on that right shall we let's build a stronger foundation let's learn the a b c d before jumping to z and once you go to z then you'll be able to form words form sentences form paragraphs sing it out loud shout it out loud and then people would want to listen because you have put in the work meet the people on the way during the podcast learn from them talk to them sometimes another part of my mind says fuck that <laughs> Sometimes I just feel life is awesome and sometimes I feel life is messy but there is beauty in it there is beauty in it and not just sometime most of the times I find I try to find that beauty because that beauty brings joy to me yeah mm love that yeah oh thank you for thank you for a co- playing along and being such a, a loyal uh comrade when it comes to flow bro yes and for everyone just you know kind of like you know tying this up one thing did you notice one thing that amit did that was so awesome right here and i might have done a little bit in here too which goes like we all kind of like influence each other too which is a beautiful thing but one thing that you did there was you had a moment where you actually ended up talking to yourself mm. right and it's just like well you have you you don't you don't have the skill right now you have the ambition but just the skill so what if what if we just put one that next step in front of the other right and you're kind of guiding yourself using you focused language and i think there's something that's also so powerful in using flow as a way to 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 speak to create a narrative for ourselves right we have so many thoughts they say joe to spend the 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day we can actually use flow not just to release but to create right and it's just like yeah and this is great they didn't start from this they didn't start great probably they probably had to learn things it wasn't natural for them so you're exactly actually where you're supposed to be yeah just keep on going remember flow is just around the corner keep on flowing <laughs> you know? love that <laughs> love that love that before i ask i ask my last question gavin um where can people find you and what's the next project because i've heard that you're working on a new project what's that project about yes absolutely and so anybody that wants to wants to uh, know more about myself and the flow fam you're welcome to um join our instagram which is at flow fam official all right so this is where we're starting to pump more content there and flow fam official you can tr- you can also uh, check flow fam on facebook if you just write flow fam there's a facebook group there that's being updated and i'm gavin masumia so if you want to do personally uh one yeah one of my my latest actually products right now is i'm baiting this this um 
this really new experiential process, which is around, um, it's called Live Your Legacy. And it's an experience where we're taking flow fam, and it's really helping people using flow and the spoken word to really speak out really the legacy that they want to leave really the legacy when it's all said and done. And so we have, it's a whole, it's a whole process has actually been created. It's very experiential right now. But one thing that people have mentioned is that flow fam has been a very healing experience. And so through this, we actually go through a lot of different release. We go through a lot of different prompts that allows people to, to, to really create and envision the life that they want. And then we take those principles into the life. Yeah. So some people are starting to share their music more. Um, others are are starting to really just post and, and express like the things that they're actually going through with music. And um, that person is not even an artist. But it's just a matter of having people step outside of their comfort zone more into ways by the end of the night. If nobody likes it, at least they can say that they're proud of themselves for trying something new. Mm -hmm. And that's where all these little micro moments, these micro flow moments can really change someone's life. Love so, that. Yeah. Love yep. that. Love that. I'll be linking all what Gavin mentioned in the show notes as well. So you'll have better access to it. Gavin, my last question to you is, if I give you a megaphone to shout out one of the messages that you learned or the lessons that you learned, one of the best messages or best lessons that you learn that you know it now, but you wish you knew it before, what would it be? Mm -hmm. One thing that uh, I know a lot of the time, but I actually, I want to tell myself, but I forget, I could forget this too. So this is for anyone turning out, this is something for me to also just remember that It's the journey. It's the journey. The minute, the minute there's a goal, then you can get it. Oh, I want to be a part of a book. Oh, ignite your life for men. I became a part of this book. Great. Oh, great. What's next? And every time I've achieved something that I thought, it didn't sustain it it's just making me realize that it's 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 the the process it's the it's the heartbreak it's the pulling the hair out it's the it's the oh my god I, i'm i'm getting i'm getting on with it and it's all of that that just makes life so fruitful unique and beautiful beautiful so just no um, yeah gavin and for everyone like it's the journey it's the journey. It's the journey. It's the process. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that's flow. That's flow. And flow that's is flow. about the journey. It's not about the outcome. It's it's really about just trusting the process. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times when we are in flow, we don't even know what we said because it's in the moment. You are so mm -hmm. hyper-tuned in the moment. It is about allowing those download come come to you rather than you anticipating what to come and that's where you break flow guys <laughs> throughout the podcast today we towards the end we did the demo but even throughout the podcast one feeling that I constantly that was coming up for me is that I was breathing better I was feeling, I was, I was already in Gavin's presence. I was feeling a little bit calmer. Flow Fam is helping and changing so many lives across the world. And there is no age. I, I saw a video where a very young guy, very young kid was flowing to, to Gavin's aunt who is in her 100, 103 or 102. And she was there and Gavin was flowing with her. There is beauty when you truly authentically express. FlowFam provides you the structure. FlowFam provides you the space. But irrespective of whether you listen to this podcast or you come across FlowFam, 
share this with anyone who you think who would might come or might not come to flow fam but they need this message that hey you matter your voice matters what you have to say it matters your feeling matters it is valid it is valid in our lives as well let's try to provide those release walls to our friends and family whenever we can get time remember flow is right around the corner always keep rallying the cipher go out there struggle release and recover <laughs> reach out to me on instagram it's the handle is it's amit underscore fande i'll be taking gavin's all social media handles and where you can reach out to him go shower love on him for everyone listening out there this is amit pande You were listening to Wish I Knew That Before. See you next time. Hey. 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 What is good? <laughs> <laughs>